What's up guys, Justin here with the Rhino Essentials. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about tools you can use to measure distances in Rhino, as well as adding dimension markers to your models. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so this is actually something you're gonna to have to do a fair amount of if you're working in a 3D model. Um, and we're just going to use our garage sample scene. But basically what I wanna do is I wanna show you a few ways to get different dimensions out of your model or to measure different lengths. So um, there, there's a few ways that you can do this. So first off, there's a couple tools in here that allow you to click between different points in order to measure dimensions. And so these are basically based on measuring by screen input. And so the first is the tool called distance. So if you type in distance, notice what that's gonna do is that's gonna give you the distance between two points. So in this case, I can click on this point and then on this point, and it's going to tell me what the distance is up here in my command line right here. And you can use this as many times as you want. So I could come in here and I can do a distance between this point and this point. It's gonna show me that's gonna be three foot seven. And actually I think I clicked on the wrong point on that one, but you can click between these in order to see those distances, other things like that. So um, you can use that to measure linear distances. Now, um, that is between two points, but you can also figure out the length and area of selected items with a couple other tools. So say that I wanted to figure out the length of this edge right here, and it's something that's already in my 3D space, right? So what I want to do is I want to do a control shift. Remember, when you do a control shift, that's going to allow you to select sub objects. So in this case, if I do a control shift and I select this edge, notice I have one edge added to the selection. Well, then you can type in length and hit the enter key. Notice how it tells me that this length is going to be four foot one inches, just like this. So um, if you select multiple edges, so say I was to come in here and do a control shift click and pick all four of these edges and then type in length, it's going to give me the cumulative length of all four curves that I have selected. So you can use that to measure the length of things that are in your model. So just select, type in length, and it's gonna give you that dimension. Now, you can also do this with area. And again, remember that you're going to do a control shift click and you're going to select the sub parts of objects. So in this case, I did a control shift click and I selected this surface right here. Well, all you have to do is just type in area and it's going to give you the area of the selected object. Now you can come in here and you can select multiple different faces. So if I wanted to come in here and this looks like it's in here as brick, so we'll leave that alone. But say I wanted to get the area of siding in here, I could select the two siding objects, then type in area and it's going to give me the area at the top of my page. So I can use this to measure things like amounts of materials inside my model. So I can figure out that I have 729 square feet of roof, for example. Or if I wanted to figure out fascia board, I could do a control shift click, go around and pick up all of those different fascia boards inside of my model like this. And I type in area and notice how overall I have 109 square feet of fascia board in here. Now note that there is also a tool in here that allows you to measure angles. And that tool is just called angle. So if I type in angle right here, this is the one where we're going to be able to pick, right? So we're gonna click on this point right here in order to set my first line. And then now it's gonna ask me for the start point of my second line and the end point of my second line. Notice how that gives me an angle measurement of 102 degrees on this corner right here, so I know this is 102 degrees. So you can use those tools to measure, but there's also a tool set in here under drafting that's going to allow you to add actual dimensions on your page as well. And so most of the time I'm actually using like an aligned dimension. You can do some of these others as well, but in this case, the aligned dimension is just gonna allow me to do this in whatever direction I want it to go. But notice how when you activate this tool, what it's gonna do is it's gonna let you set one point and then another point, and then you can move your mouse to set where this is going to show up on your screen like this. Now, one thing you're gonna notice about these is they come in really big. And part of the reason for that is because if you click 
on this linear dimension, notice how it's showing the model space scale to be really big. I'm gonna bring that down to something like two. And notice how when I bring that down to two, what that's gonna do is that's going to make this a much um, better size dimension right here. But we can use that in order to do a flat dimension like this, or you can also align it between these two points right here and do the same thing. So we're gonna click in here to do this. We're going to select this object and we're gonna bring the model space scale down to two, like this. The cool thing about these is they're going to stay in your model, meaning they don't go away. And so if you wanna adjust how far out these are, you can just click on them, select your linear dimension, and specifically you wanna pick one of these points, the linear dimension arrow points. And if you move that up and down, notice how your linear dimension is going to move on your screen like this. Now, one thing I would recommend with linear dimensions, so we're gonna come in here, we're gonna select these by doing a shift click. One thing I would recommend is probably putting these on their own layer. So in this case, I would add a layer for dimensions. And then I would take those objects and drop them on the dimensions layer so that you can toggle them on and off when you don't need them inside of your scene. And the cool thing about this is these are going to show up in all of your different views. So notice how even though I have a different style down here, those dimensions are still showing up. So if you wanna add dimensions inside of Rhino, you can do it using those tools. All right, so that's where I'm in this video. Let me know if there's anything else about the dimensioning or measuring functionality in Rhino you'd like to learn more about. I just love having that conversation with you guys. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.